not feeling a video today and I'm still not feeling it right now. But when I went to write these instructions down, it got to be so many words that I thought it was going to be overwhelming unless you saw some of these tips and techniques. That might make it a little bit easier. So here's the video, but you have to promise me, remember, I run a horse rescue, so don't judge me for my fingernails. <laughs> Your first step is to have the horse stand on a piece of this foam board and we get an impression of the horse's foot that you could use as a guide. Then I use magic marker and I go around that impression and then I cut it with a heated knife. I'll show you how easy that is. Okay, this is the key to everything, a heated knife. You make sure that it has a handle on it so that when you pick it up, you don't burn yourself. Obviously, don't touch the metal part of the knife. The knife is serrated so that when it hits the uh, cushion, it cuts through it like a loaf of bread. Now, I have it marked with a magic marker, and I'm going to take my heated knife, and I'm going to cut around it. Now, you want to give yourself plenty of room. You want to cut outside of the space that you need because when it melts, it does shrink a little bit. So just at first, just kind of cut around it. See how easily that cuts? You just want to cut around it until you get just the outer, the outer bounds of what you need. And then you clean it up, you go and you cut closer. If you tried to cut through this and the knife was not heated, it would be very difficult. But watch how easily it cuts through it like this. I also uh, find it easier and better if you mark your uh, foam before you cut it. That way you know exactly where you're cutting. And you can just slice it all the way through just like a loaf of bread. The hotter the knife, the easier and quicker it slices. Once you slice, sometimes it will leave some goo on the knife. While the knife is hot, it's best to wipe it off. I don't have any goo on it right now. But while the knife is hot, wipe it off so that it doesn't catch fire because it will catch fire. This is a cushion that was already in one of Ani's boots. So this is what it looks like when it comes out. It went in this thick. So it, she smashes it down throughout the day. So each day I go in and I put a new layer on, along the bottom of it. Okay, I've drawn um, a pattern on this cushion here that I can use this hot knife to just cut right off, cut off the excess there. So that is the shape of Bonnie's hoof. There you go, and that's the rough shape, shape of her hoof. Now, because I have this cushion that is already molded to Ani's foot, I don't need to continue to cut this piece that supports her frog, but initially, here's what I did. I would uh, take this insert, which I got from another yoga cushion, and cut it in the shape of this pattern here, and then I just attached it to the hoof cushion. And here's how you do that. You can just take the heated knife and put it between the two cushions and then press down where you want them to stick. And I'll just show you, see it holds. Then that way you don't have to worry about taping all of the pieces onto your horse's foot. Really, this right here is good enough to stick in your horse's boot or to tape to the bottom of your horse's foot. But if you want to go even further, for a horse that has a little bit of rotation in their uh, coffin bone, you can cut out uh, an indentation here to give them a little bit of relief. I don't know if you've seen those uh, orthotic inserts for horses that have an indentation where their coffin bone rotation might be uh, pressuring their sole. You can uh, use your heated knife to make that indentation here. And basically you just cut the, the outer bounds of it and then you just use the heated knife to scrape it out. Then once you get the piece out that you uh, want to give the coffin bone some relief, then just go back in and smooth it out with your heated knife.
All right. And another way that I uh, bring on a sim relief is I, I put a little bit firmer foundation on the back of her hoof and then keep the cushion in the front. And I do that by cutting out a piece of the rear foam and then replacing it with this, which is a little bit firmer. So then that way it's soft in the front and it's a little bit firmer in the back. And I do that by taking the heated knife and going to just at the tip of the frog and making a slice here like this. What I'm doing is cutting the that part in half and then I'm going to cut out the back side of the uh, cushion here. And I'm cutting it just down to where I sliced it in half. So that, when it's finished, you slide this in here like this. Let me get that a little neater. And it goes into the boot or around the hoof uh, with duct tape like this. Where you have more support in the back, firmer support in the back, and then cushier in the front. I'm the first to admit I am no expert and I'm definitely not a farrier. God bless farriers for the hard work that they do. I'm just sharing with you some of the things that we've done to bring comfort to our horse which suffers from chronic laminitis. I have to stress, Fire safety and all of that is totally up to you. You've got to have a fire extinguisher handy. And I would also recommend that you wear some kind of a breathing mask because um, the fumes off of that, the burning foam gets kind of overwhelming at times. So safety's up to you. And again, I'm not a, an expert. Just try this and see if it works for you. Let me know what you think.